moves us into uh, adopt resolution 2018-140, which is a concept plan for City Square West and library sites. Before Kevin gets started here, thanks for being here, Noel. Um, I do want to recognize we have a, 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 a large amount of people here that are in the audience with us tonight as well, and they are the folks that were part of the task force. And again, I would like to publicly say thank you to um, all your efforts and work that you put into coming up with some rather unique ideas. So um, I just want to say thank you to them. Um, I'm not going to parade them all up here and say their names. Um, unless they want to. I don't know if I'll remember them all, Matt, unless you want to, or, or we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> we're good. But, but thank, thank you, you to the task force for all you've done. So this is an exciting project. Yeah. It's been. <coughs> Hmm. Great, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, a year ago tomorrow, um, we were here uh, with you guys appointing a task force to look at uh, the City Square West project. So um, we're excited to present to you um, the uh, concept plans which have been developed for the City Square West and uh, library projects. and. Uh, um, that are both proposed in uh, historic downtown Chaska. Um, one of the things uh, that we originally set out to do, or you had set out to do in terms of your guidance to them, uh, was to create an identifiable concentration of desirable amenities that collectively created an economic value premium downtown. Uh, that was uh, their uh, fundamental charge. Um, you appointed a wide variety of people. Uh, we had uh, the mayor and uh, Councilmember Giesler on uh, uh, the task force, as well as well as members from the Planning Commission, the HBC, the Park Board, the Historical Society, the Downtown Business Alliance, the Carver County Library, Friends of the Library, Southwest Transit, uh, three residents, and uh, two institutional members, one from uh, GA and one from the school district. So we had a nice <coughs> variety of people um, who participated as a portion of that, or as a part of that task force, excuse me. Um, they met six times, uh, each one with a specific topic, with a specific uh, idea of what was um, the goal to accomplish during that meeting to uh, uh, move these forward. And uh, I think probably, um, at least I was intrigued by uh, that one of the great things about this project was it really didn't end where I thought it would. Um, so it was uh, intellectually challenging from that perspective. Um, they, it really shows that the task force added a lot of really, really good value to this project. Um, it just wasn't us telling them, here's what you should do, and they're saying yes. <coughs> they brought a lot of value um, to this plan, to these, to these plans, I should say, uh, in terms of um, how they were put together and uh, how they're um, being uh, uh, formulated for you. Um, also, we did receive a number of uh, um, involved the public in a number of ways um, with this, uh, the task force. Um, we had um, uh, several engagements. Uh, we had uh, a booth at River City Days in the Fire and Ice Bond Spiel. Uh, we did an online survey where we had a really large uh, participation rate. I think it was close to 1,000 people um, participated. Uh, in the online survey. Then we also did um, an open house, and then after each meeting, um, they published all of their uh, packets of information and all the uh, uh, information surrounding their meetings on the city's website so that people could follow along if they couldn't uh, participate in any of those. Um, one of the other pieces um, with this, uh, really for a first time, was that the city had an employee committee as a portion of, as a part of this. Um, which we felt was important because it really gave uh, the employees who are going to build this, maintain it, provide public services to it, make sure it's safe, make sure that it's programmable, um, provide feedback uh, into the system. So they are providing feedback loops as well as the public into this, and um, that employee committee did a really wonderful job as well in terms of uh, providing ideas and opportunities to be incorporated um, and I think that uh, 
we really view that as something that could be carried on into future Catalyst projects. Um, I think the employees really enjoyed being a part of it and seeing how a project like this came together rather than just being at the end and kind of going, oh, how am I going to maintain this or how are we going to build this or all those other questions. They were able to weigh in early in on that. Um, we did have a number of objectives um, for this project. Um, I won't go over all of them, but I do want to hit a, uh, a few of them um, because they, they all are important. Um, obviously, with all of our projects, uh, we want to make sure that it's done in a uh, high-quality manner and continues um, the city's legacy of visionary projects. And so uh, we're really excited about what um, this project is able to bring uh, forward, uh, really creating um, kind of an outdoor community center, a highly programmable space that can be um, changeable by season and really engage the public in a way um, that we haven't been able to yet uh, in the downtown area. Um, that the buildings are complementary to the historic core of the community. Um, the consultants who did a wonderful job with Hoisington Kogler and uh, the Music Inc. group um, really helped us try and identify how to fit these buildings on the site that were um, compatible with adjacent um, properties uh, and could fit into the downtown. Um, one of the other uh, pieces um, that was very important to us is having uh, the site currently is uh, consists of three uh, existing buildings and, e and one of those being a retail center that has a number of tenants but really making sure that we had an open line of communication between the property owners and the tenants as well so that they understood what was going on during this process. And so we had, um, I don't know how many meetings with property owners uh, individually or in groups and tenants individually or in groups, but it was rather significant um, number where we tried to engage them. Um, we brought in uh, translators uh, where appropriate uh, to help us uh, break down language barriers and um, really tried to uh, make sure that both the property owners and tenants knew that um, that we respected them and wanted to try and have a fair process uh, and discussion um, related to uh, a place where they own or are currently doing business. Um, the uh, um, other piece that I wanted to touch on quickly was um, that this was designed to be welcoming to all Chaska residents and also to bring uh, people from above the bluff as well as surrounding communities into the downtown area. And so that was one of the pieces um, that we worked on um, very hard. Uh, here's a quick recap of those meetings. We had six meetings um, with um, uh, purpose and objectives and outcomes for each of those meetings. And in the bottom uh, yellow box that you can see um, here uh, is kind of showing uh, where the uh, public uh, input process um, occurred with this project. Um, kind of the first piece I want to hit on is uh, kind of an overall uh, piece, uh, kind of showing the downtown. Um, uh, we're right here in City Hall, um, immediately to the south of us is the project uh, referred to as City Square West, just west of City Square. Um, and then we have two library sites that we're considering. One is somewhat to the northwest of us where the license center and a, a residential home is located. And the other uh, is on the east half of the uh, Guardian Angels Elementary School block uh, where there's um, two residences uh, facing out towards um, Pine Street as well. The uh, uh, City Square West um, site plan uh, really tried to break down the site into four uh, buildings per se, um, two residential projects uh, with, and then two commercial projects. Uh, in this option A, the uh, commercial projects also have residential above them, um, trying to provide for a large um, open space uh, plaza, Paseo area uh, that connects down to the uh, walkway on the back side of um, the Warner Block and then also um, up to the History Center and into City Hall Plaza uh, as well and really providing for a um, nice large area 
um, and we'll I'll kind of show you some additional details, uh, which really breaks this down into many elements um, so that you can have multiple things happening here at the same time. Um, these uh, are rental um, uh, apartment uh, projects uh, on this side. The parking uh, for this entire block is located um, underground um, of here. Uh, also, um, there is some on-street parking as well. Uh, from a circulation perspective, um, the uh, circulation is located down on uh, 3rd Street. Uh, primarily, people would be coming into this area on 41, and this really provides the opportunity to have a right turn in um, to the facility uh, without really, um, if it was up here, you'd be going left against traffic, and you'd probably uh, experience some backups here, which could influence what's happening out at the uh, intersection and then people leaving generally are going to the north um, not that they have to but generally that's where they'd be going and they could take a free right a free right and either continue up to Chaska Boulevard or take another right and come out to the signal on 41 and go from there so from a circulation perspective <coughs> it's really easy for people to get into the site and out of the site as well um, which is important to us whether you're visiting uh, the shops um, plaza or area or if you're living in the houses themselves the uh, alternate plan uh, this option B which we want to have flexibility on because uh, we haven't done market studies um, yet uh, really just eliminates the residential above these two commercial buildings which you can see here in red um, so that's really the only difference between those two plans um, uh, there's not a lot of residential units um, above those buildings and so uh, maybe a developer finds that um, attractive maybe they don't and we want to just uh, uh, show um, both options there the parking for the site has really um, been uh, determined by the uh, option a which is the maximum development um, of the site um, this is kind of a closer up of uh, what's happening on the site themselves uh, here's this building a building B on 4th Street and the two uh, commercial buildings uh, with residential potentially above a uh, couple of the uh, little finer grain details you'll see um, we pulled this building slightly back from Pine Street to try and provide a little separation uh, soften the edge here a little bit with residential across the street as well as uh, on this side given that we have a lot of activity planned in this area to provide a little bit of um, physical separation, which I can show you a little bit later. Uh, we also have a little mini plaza here, which might be public, might be private. Um, one of the pieces with this site that you'll remember uh, from our work session is um, there's about 11 or 12 feet of grade from this corner up to 4th Street or out to 41. And so it's kind of sloping um, to the north um, and so there's grade to make up on the site and so we have a really a set of terraces um, on the site that step down through the site rather than having one large um, step down on the site which is something we originally had and uh, we modified oops um, there we go um, so that as you can see it can function as one large space or given that the elevations are separate here, um, you could have something going on here and something going on here, which is entirely different because of the grade separation. Um, or if something was larger, you might be able to use this as a platform for a play or um, uh, music or something and have people out here as well. Um, one of the pieces uh, as well that came with this is um, activation. Um, this is really trying to create an outdoor activity center um, where people will want to come and um, uh, recreate and do things. And so um, we brought in the music in group, which really uh, specializes in activating uh, public and uh, semi-public spaces uh, to talk about how to do that and kind of laid out um, a set of little box diagrams showing generally what could happen out there from uh, markets, uh, to game activities, to uh, interconnected pathways for kids to play on, uh, potential stage locations, as well as um, just other areas where something could be happening uh, in this um, 
the site. This and is outdoor dining. And outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail in each of these, but I'm going to get up to the uh, library sites um, quickly here. Um, the uh, task force looked at a number of library sites. Originally, we had looked at this um, as part of the City Square project. Um, the task force recommended um, and is recommending uh, that the license or that the library not be located on City Square West. We have two alternate sites um, for that um, to occur, really happening at the same time um, or approximately thereof. Uh, one is utilizing the license center site and then the residents to the south, and the other is to GA, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the uh, modifications that we've done subsequent to our last uh, work session um, prior to this uh, we showed trying to keep um, the uh, license center on the site there, there were a lot of uh, comments about that um, mostly negative comments about how those things might interact uh, talking with the county we saw some possibilities of uh, where that could be located elsewhere in downtown Chaska and we're working with them this plan really shows a full utilization, full utilization of that block um, by a library. Uh, one of the things that we have shown in here as well is because it's um, larger, uh, that you could also bring some ancillary <coughs> commercial activity in there if you wanted to, or if there was a desire um, to have a kind of thinking about how maybe Barnes and Nobles works where you have a coffee shop or something else happening um, in proximity to a library. And so there is some extra space in there for something to happen. Um, down at the south end, you know, where you could have um, uh, a sitting area facing south, picking up the winter sun. Uh, also, the site plan utilizes um, this trail that was talked about during the CIP process um, that, that is coming under 41 and coming right by the site to create a plaza on the north side, which could be used for um, part of the library functions, uh, for outdoor reading or other things but also could be used um, for people on the bike uh, trail um, for a trailhead facility. So you could have a bathroom there, uh, a lot of different things that people, besides the parking, um, that people could use as this as a uh, location where um, you would get on the trail as well. And so, you know, whether there's a little bike repair station or just air or whatever happens to be there, make it a little more comfortable for people who might be um, uh, using this as a trailhead and so there's a nice um, plaza on the north side uh, interior one on the south side uh, really linking it very nicely um, with the uh, city square project which is kitty corner uh, to the southeast uh, this site as well is fully parked underground uh, on the half block and there is um, at grade um, parking on the street shown as well um, and so between the two, you know, that would be providing into this area a uh, block and a half of underground parking, which would be a fairly significant uh, enhancement uh, than to what exists today. The one real quick thing I'll point out on there that we've had Hoisington start to look at is you'll see that gray strip on the side. If you did have something like a coffee shop in there, to look at the potential, of, could you have some kind of a drive-through facility on there, mm -hmm. uh, which might make it more, uh, uh, appealing for somebody to locate in that facility so you see that in Roseville there's like there's at least a couple of libraries in the Twin Cities that actually have a, a formal coffee shop that are associated with them um, and sort of like you know, Kevin said I mean it's sort of like a Barnes & Noble it's a nice amenity to have within the facility it's certainly worth exploring yeah. further um, and, you we gotta be careful of residential and the lights flash and that's you you absolutely do and so just trying to think through those spaces, just trying to show that there might be a potential there of how that, that could work. Um, just at a conceptual level, there's room to add some commercial, whether you add these other components, we, we have to dig in much deeper, but we at least wanted to show them in this initial yeah. phase Absolutely. as something worth talking about further. Um, <coughs> just trying to skip ahead to the end. Um, this isn't the end of the project, this is really the start of the project. Right. And so we just are trying to lay out um, a variety of ideas uh, in relationship to what's happening. Uh, the other site uh, that was looked at um, 
really from a secondary perspective, but also um, knowing that you might need an alternate site. Uh, was the eastern uh, portion of the uh, Guardian Angels block, uh, where the school <coughs> the school is located here on the western portion of the block. Uh, Guardian Angels owns most of the block. There's a house, there's two houses up on the northeast corner uh, that the church doesn't own. Uh, this provides for a library uh, really facing out uh, to the northeast to 2nd Street, really welcoming people down 2nd Street. Um, and also provides for underground parking, uh, provides for a new um, uh, at-grade parking facility, which is something that the church was very interested in having. They, they have a lot of activities there, but really don't have any um, on-site parking, per se. They just have street parking. Um, and so that was a piece. Uh, we also looked at the technical feasibility of locating a tunnel uh, underneath our street on 2nd Street um, and that is feasible. We haven't looked into, because we don't really know the connections into the church or those pieces or the school. Um, that really needs to be done by the church, but at least in terms of our road, because the sewer kind of comes out uh, from the church and goes this way, and this one kind of comes out this way, so we don't have sanitary sewer running down the middle. We have water main, but we can make water main go up or down because it runs under pressure. Um, and so that is something that technically is feasible it's deep enough to water table and all the other things that you could do that um, and so it's a piece that we'd like to uh, if this were moving forward uh, as a site uh, something we'd like to talk to the church for further about to see if they're really interested um, in that um, one of the other pieces that we did mention as well um, from an action item perspective is that if this isn't you know, if we do move forward with the license center as the uh, preferred location, and that actually comes to fruition, um, the church has expressed a, a, a strong desire to do something on their site to make their campus more viable into the future. And we think since they're willing to look at it, um, that we should even continue that discussion with them, even if they're, even if the library doesn't locate there, because there might be something like a senior apartment building or something <coughs> that would add um, benefit um, not only to the downtown, but also to their campus as well. And so, um, so even, um, I think Matt probably summed it up best as saying, uh, whenever we meet with them that, uh, I think everybody would be unhappy if we didn't choose their site for the library location. <laughs> but you know, Kevin, Kevin talked about the process that the task force went through. We sort of started out the process looking at <coughs> library sites with, uh, really only the county saying the license center was okay because it's I mean, basically the county and the city we can work together um, but we were really talking about private sites for the other mm -hmm. ones and whether or not they're feasible and we sort of started the discussions on the s private sites that we looked at as I was thinking oh man they're not mm -hmm. they're not gonna buy into this at, at all to where we're now I think they're disappointed that we're not choosing these sites as primary sites which to <coughs> me is a really neat position to be in as far as a community in these these facilities like Guardian Angels or like the Moravian Church in downtown that have been institutions in the, this community for a long time and how do we make them viable into the future? I think what this process has done is it really started dialogue that didn't exist before and have opened up all of our eyes to what potential opportunities are there to take what we've started here in this process and carry it beyond just what we're looking at on these two sites. So to me, that sort of ended up in a really exciting place. Um, we have a, as I mentioned, this isn't the uh, end of the, the process by any means. We have a lot of next steps. Um, I've outlined some of them relationship to uh, City Square West and the library. Uh, primarily um, on City Square West, really working with property owners, the Models, um, on a purchase agreement that would include a mechanism for the existing tenants to relocate sooner than later and, and somehow would keep that space vacant until closing. Also working with the retail tenants on the site um, to make sure that after uh, the Model uh, purchase agreement is finalized to allow uh, them to relocate early if they should choose to do so. Uh, in a manner, in a location that they feel is best for them. Um, really postponing a little bit um, discussions with the clients in the op post office. Post office is pretty small. We can 
figure out a place for that to go in the downtown. Uh, the Kleins are busy um, with their transition right now. Um, they've been part of the discussions all along, and so uh, really focusing on uh, the models and the uh, retail tenants first. To me, this is a fairness issue. Um, <clears throat> these are businesses that have lived under uncertainty for too long. And I think as a community, we really owe it uh, to, to make sure that this is something that we address sooner than later. Um, and then develop an RFP and then obviously the financing model for the project. Uh, in relationship to the library, um, looking for a home for the license center is kind of job one to make sure so if we can free up the site that we can do that. Uh, talking with the property owner who owns 401 Pine Street, which is the house kind of at the northwest corner uh, there. Uh, continuing discussions with GA um, about what could happen on their property and how that could move forward. And then as well, working on an RFP for an architect uh, to, to build the site and also uh, the financing models on those uh, sites. Um, kind of want to, we had spent a lot of time uh, at the task force talking about um, the uh, plazas and paseo areas. Very cool. And I wanted to kind of go through uh, some of the slides. We had Hoisington put these together. We had done a video before, and the video as a block diagram really didn't still seem to give us the sense of place and how much space there would be in the general um, uh, just configurations of the, lo of the uh, Paseo and Plaza. And so we went to some fixed um, viewpoints. Wait, I one other thing I want to point out that Kevin always talks about. It's way too easy to plan things in the summer in Minnesota. <clears throat> we don't need to worry about planning for the summer. We need, to pl we need to worry about planning for the winter. And so most everything that we have them doing here is planning for how we use this space in the winter so it's actually used. The summer's just going to come. We, we've got one picture of the summer, so yeah. uh, it's at the end. Um, but That's most, only three months out of the whole but year. But mostly about the winter time. This is really looking from, you can see here, uh, the building on the northeast center of the site back in. Um, you can see kind of some seasonal buildings, temporary buildings that we can bring in. We have talked about creating a wintertime or a holiday market uh, down here to draw people from Christmas uh, through the holidays. Uh, in the summertime, you could use this for um, as part of uh, um, the farmer's market <coughs> or something like that where people could come and sell produce to bring people in here. Uh, here you can see the uh, steps going up the elevation to the buildings uh, to this upper plaza. Uh, we're showing a building or a kind of open building there um, uh, with a kind of a chimney feature, kind of trying to provide a terminus for the view from uh, 41. Uh, you see the first or the level uh, gallery shops um, <coughs> on the uh, uh, building uh, B. Uh, we had kind of talked kind of conceptually about um, whether there's some artists or gallery space in here and we're kind of showing that um, in here uh, up on top of the apartment building trying to create value for the people who would live in here. Uh, some uh, um, rooftop uh, recreational uh, piece uh, located in here. Uh, this is viewing kind of from close to the aperture uh, facing out towards 41, kind of back into the site. Here again, you can kind of see one of those holiday pieces. Uh, you'll see a little fireplace, whether that's that or not. Uh, oops. Um, one of the things that uh, I'll give lots of credit to Hoisington about um, they really took, um, there was a lot of comments about um, creating things that were authentic to Chaska. And what they did here was created kind of an Adirondack chair that's based on the old um, brick, uh, what they moved with the bricks in Chaska bricks. If you go over to the uh, 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 Fireman's Park, you'll see a smaller version of this with bricks on it. But really just kind of taking that same look something that's very authentic to Chask and kind of creating a chair out of it that you could sit on, um, which I'm sure people did during the day, you know, taking a break instead of moving bricks with them, that they'd actually use that to uh, sit on for a while and trying to incorporate, again, pieces of that authenticity that really makes this Chaska 
um, into the, uh, oops, so I keep doing that, um, piece. And you can see the, uh, um, the, the uh, kind of focal building um, behind here as well. You know, one thing I'll point out about the, the Christmas market, farmer's market, you know, this is something that, this isn't out of the realm. We've, we've talked, you know, the chamber already right now does a weekly one throughout the summer. And, you know, we've talked to him about this idea about extending that type of thing, uh, you know, having it be throughout the summer, but then to also look at this idea of having a, a month-long holiday-type market uh, down there, which is, you know, it's a pretty European thing uh, to do, but I think is very, I think they have laid the groundwork for something like that to be able to, to happen. And I think they, uh, the Chamber and the Downtown Business Alliance have both shown a real interest in wanting to pursue that. Um, kind of looking from kind of this quasi um, private, semi public upper terrace um, back. Uh, to the north, uh, again, kind of, you see this building. Um, again, we don't really have a form or function to it yet. Just trying to show something here because you might uh, see this as a place where people have, where you could rent this out for parties, but uh, we were just showing it completely glass, kind of roll up garage door type things that you could use in the summer, but also put them down and heat it uh, in the winter time, uh, trying to make it as usable, you know, it's a place where you, during the holidays, Santa could be or wherever would be a place to, to bring people um, down to this location. Have you ever been to, uh, uh, what's that one in Edina? Centennial Lakes. Centennial Lakes. Uh, if you've ever been down to uh, their public area in yep. that, they have a building that doesn't look like that, but it serves the same function where it's basically, it's sort of a warming house in the winter. And it ends up being a gathering place for birthday parties and things like that uh, during the entire year. Uh, so informally, it can act as sort of that warming house during the winter, uh, but then also be rentable type of space. One of the things that generally we're trying to do was across from City Square and looking up this way, just trying to have some element that kind of physically terminated that, but also drew your attention and eye into there, whether this is again, the right answer or not. We're just trying to show and provide some uh, ideas of what could uh, happen in there. Uh, again, you can kind of see this green space uh, in front of this building here, um, trying to provide, again, softening that edge. Um, so if there's activities happening up here, it doesn't feel right next to that building, that apartment building, and so that those people feel a little bit of relief. Uh, but hopefully they're locating there because they like people and activity because <laughs> we're planning on a lot of it. Um, this is kind of the aperture coming in from uh, Pine Street uh, between the two buildings looking to the south. Here you can kind of see that. Looking um, to the east. Looking to the east, excuse me. Um, the uh, uh, kind of <coughs> focal building um, here. Um, this is kind of right on the upper terrace. You see a, a little curling. Uh, activity uh, here, the seats again here. Uh, this other one is nine pin, uh, which is an interesting game. Uh, was actually in the original city charter. Uh, um, actually doing a little bit of research on it. It's actually a very intriguing game. It was originally, well not originally, but it was very, uh, came out of um, uh, German religion. Um, and this was, the ball was actually the positive spirit, and then you were trying to knock down the pins, which were the negative spirit, and whatever you didn't knock down required your penance um, afterwards. So the better you were, that's how we pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, it got it got so popular that people started drinking and gambling. Um, I can't imagine that. Can't imagine that. Yeah. And so it was in the charter because people started regulating where nine pin could happen, and so you started to see other games show up like eight pin. Which had was nine pin, but had a king pin, and that's where that term comes from. Which was really nine pin, but they just made one fancier. <laughs> and then the other one was ten pin, which is bowling. Um, and so, kind of how that transitioned into current day utilization, but a, kind of a historic game um, next to kind of a current 
day event which we mm -hmm. do you know this could be just not on ice necessarily but it could just be the the uh, uh, slippery stuff. surface that yeah. we use right now for the portable piece but ways for people to play games mm -hmm. up on that space do something interesting mm -hmm. a reason to come down um, I guess I do have to explain my I was going to say, Kevin, would you like to <laughs> answer that? Um, yeah. This, actually, I'd seen the sign, and it was in relation to a holiday market. And um, I thought it was really great because it really just said naughty and nice. Naughty or nice. And I was like, that really doesn't go far enough if you're going to have a holiday market. Because um, at least for me, um, it's like thinking about, um, especially my wife tells me the story all the time about how when she was a kid, they went up to Brainerd and they have a big Paul Bunyan there. And she's like, I just remember when we went up to Paul Bunyan, he knew my name. Uh, <laughs> hey, that, he knew my name too. Exactly. <laughs> and so here's another way that when you go up to see maybe Santa's in there, and your parents can kind of preload it, but you go up and your name's already on the nice category, and you, you could make it as a memorable experience. Or if you're out with friends like me and Matt, I'd put Matt's name under the naughty side. Uh, just as a way to have some fun, be out there, a little social activity, but a way, not necessarily that this is the idea, but ways for people to engage this space differently. And so um, that's really what we're showing here, and I guess I'm half nice and half naughty. Um, um, so just, again, a couple of different ways at uh, uh, varying uh, levels uh, to make this an interesting space for people. Uh, one of the other pieces, um, this isn't a Lexus to remember commercial, um, but uh, <laughs> we, we saw an opportunity uh, between the buildings. This is on 3rd Street, um, where you could invite, whether it's the Boy Scouts or somebody else down, uh, to have uh, Christmas tree sales would be another way to bring people down. And, you know, we can just see the Christmas tree being loaded on the car to disappear. This isn't a forest of uh, trees being planted. It's just a holiday event to, again, an, a different way to bring people down to the space uh, on a nightly basis to uh, 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 engage what's happening there. Um, out from 41, um, really, we wanted to make sure that this said Chaska. <laughs> and so uh, that's yes. what we did. Um, <laughs> you know, it screams it. Where, this I, where this idea came from was actually in Boston, Boston, in one of their public plaza areas, that they actually had Boston spelled out in big letters like this, and it really became sort of an attraction uh, for people to go to in a public space, and quite, I mean, it, it's, it's eye-catching when you're driving down 41, too. It's, it's how do you draw people's eyes back into it. Well, I think another that this could not just be a holiday, it wouldn't necessarily just need to be a holiday piece. You could have this with the changeable lights, so you could do it all year with different activities, just kind of like we do the pavilion. Uh, uh, another thing that we talked about is, you know, the way, another way that people interact with place now is through Instagram and selfies, selfies yeah. and yeah. that kind of thing. And so this is, we talked about what is that kind of iconic selfie moment um, that maybe this space could provide. And so this is an example of, you know, one way that maybe you could create that. Did you say but changeable it, colors? Yeah. Okay. yeah. The color yeah. ideas, though, so, like, kind of the stage you know, box having, box. like, the, the stage that we have the out Vikings, there and, winning, you know, if it's a uh, Vikings yeah. game and it's purple yeah. Yeah. and it's if it's, you know, either. Christmas time, it's red and green or it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's St. Patrick's Day and it's green, but it gives you ways to change uh, so that people are always noticing that change mm -hmm. that's there. That's cool. Plus this new play equipment. So here's the summer picture. Um, <laughs> this is uh, looking uh, really from uh, building C towards D, showing that there's generous rooms uh, adjacent to the building. So if there were restaurants located there, you could have outdoor seating mm -hmm. on the inside of this courtyard, which would provide protection from 41 and really uh, continue to activate um, the plaza space, which is in and around this. Um, and you can kind of see that uh, we're showing it on the uh, building to the south and kind of wrapping as well into that uh, courtyard um, or facing out towards 41. Not that it has to be any of these places, but that these places are sized to accommodate that, but still allow for people to move through and other events um, to happen in and around them as well. You know, when Kevin talked to the the only way that this space works is if we actively program it. And so one of the things I, 
uh, that we wanted to be sort of deliberate about when we were putting a description down here is really sort of an outside community center. Um, you know, the community center is a fantastic building, but if it wasn't programmed, I mean, you'd still get people that would come and use the pool, and you'd still get people that come for open skate or open basketball, but the thing that really adds vibrancy to that building is the fact that, you know, there's dance classes in the auditorium, or there's, uh, um, you know, parties with characters that happen in the, in the community room, or there's craft things that go on in the wet or dry craft rooms. It's those activities that are programmed there that really bring the people, and, uh, you know, I think what Music Inc. Group has done is really sort of create a vision for what that could be. Um, but I think it's really important to understand that if we're going to do this right, we have to use this as programmable space. And that uh, we need to look at this uh, as an, an area that we have to actively program on, a, on an ongoing basis. So that's all that I have for you. I know that there's people from the uh, task force here, and if any of them had anything. No one has anything oh. to say. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's Will. Oh, there's Will. Oh, there's Will. Uh, I bet you have a picture of it, don't you? No. Uh, I'm Greg Swan. I live at 106 Pine Street. Uh, I'm a City Square West Task Force member, and I just want to say um, thank you to the City Council for the opportunity uh, for us to, to get to work together on this, this program. Um, huge thanks to the City staff and the Employee Committee and the consultants, HKGI, um, and just the Task Force members. And I think you can see here, like, great care has been taken for the existing business owners for the legacy of historic downtown Chaska and this block for the neighbors and the stakeholders that are there, which is really cool. Um, as a downtown resident, I can just share, we're really, really excited about this. Um, with the momentum that we have seen with Fireman's Park and the traffic coming down and the, the programming there and the curling center and the national, the international attention on Chaska, um, we're excited about more things to do downtown, more residents with expendable income moving down here, and more reasons to come downtown. That is awesome. And all of this just fuels more reasons why Chaska is and will continue to be the best small town in America. So, um, you know, no matter, we have lots of, <laughs> lots of work left to do, defining what's happening there and excited to have music Musicant maybe Artscape, et cetera, figure out what that is, whether it's a winter market or a Ferris wheel <laughs> in the summer, artist housing or other programming. I think that's really good. But um, no matter the specific tenants uh, or experiences, this plan is really an investment in our community. And I think it'll pay dividends for generations to come. Oh, me too. Thanks. Very Thanks. good. Thank you, sir. You took the words right out of my mouth. I knew you'd get that Ferris wheel in there. <laughs> There's your own for it. I think it should be on the rooftop or something. <laughs> that was the interesting thing of, about this this whole process is, as you know, we were bound to determine that library was going to be part of this process. And mm -hmm. out of it, we determined that's probably the worst possible place for it. You know, <laughs> yep. and that's where ideas like the Ferris wheel came up that brought us into, you know, things that we saw tonight that you know, you never thought would be available for downtown. I mean, so I thought it was interesting how in the six or eight meetings <coughs> that we had that we could take and start with what's currently standing to come up with something that looks like this. So I thought it was a, it's really the first time I was part of one of these task force that we, we took this on like this. And and it was, it was interesting because people, didn't always agree on things, and we might have changed some people's thinking. <laughs> Who are you um, looking at? But that was that was the good part, is because everyone had a different idea how you looked at things, yep. and until you really heard someone else's thoughts and ideas, it didn't make sense. And then you go, oh, that makes perfect sense. So I think it was I think it was a great mix of people, and again, you know, thank you to all of the people that were part of it because I thought it was I thought it was a neat process. So.
I'd like to back all that. Yeah. To yeah. see what, yeah. what the results are. I mean, this is the first time we're all seeing Back. these pictures yeah. so that because I me personally I've worried that this is a lot of open space and what do we do with it and how are we going to utilize it and this shows how some of the yeah. just okay. really ground or maybe it's at 50,000 foot level at this point mm -hmm. right. to see what what something like this could look like a lot of so that extra time for between your work session and now really allowed us to take all those comments that we heard um, from the last task force <coughs> the work session and really try and uh, flesh out some of that and really try and understand what we were hearing which is is this too small too big and try and figure out ways to, sh to illustrate that and show that to you in a way that you could understand it and agree with it or not but at least um, be cognizant of uh, what could happen there and um, provide direction to us because again this isn't the end this is really the beginning and We'll continue to refine all of these things um, as we move forward, but um, we just wanted to take this as an opportunity to show how you could use this in the winter time. Not that this is the answer; it's an answer to how you could use it. And there probably still are a lot of great ideas that can uh, bubble up. And whether in the end I'm naughty or nice, we'll find out. But um, I think it's also important to point out that you know. Kevin talked about how there hasn't been a market study done on this. I think it's important to recognize that part of Poisington's team was a developer and a developer that's actually worked in the western uh, suburbs who's, who uh, has done really nice projects um, and art space as a development group who have been directly involved. And <coughs> as we've gone through this process, we haven't hesitated to as we've seen development groups come through the city, sit down and talk with them about this to gather input from them. To me, when I look at this and I hear the conversations we've had with developers, I think the idea is very feasible. I think a market study, what that's gonna do is it's gonna boil down to how many exact units can this support? Do we have to phase this? Um, how much square footage a restaurant can be supported? How much square footage of retail can be? It's not, I, I don't feel like going into this, it's a stretch to do this. To me, the question is, how is the market gonna dictate how this is implemented? Mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna be a big part of the RFP process that we go through now, <coughs> of getting this out there, is, is starting to define what is, uh, how are developers gonna be <coughs> this? And I, don't think, and I had mentioned this when we were talking about budgets earlier, I don't think that we could have done a project like this without first doing a catalyst project like that. Because people have a very different view, developers and the outside community and the community in general have a very different view of downtown Chaska now than they did three years ago. And, uh, you know, Kevin and I have been sitting here for 20 years and, you know, 17 of those years, it's like, how do we get people to view downtown as, as a place that um, is, a, is a desirable destination place? And I really feel like we're sort of at the point now where we've created enough tailwind behind us that now it's being able to be a little bit more picky um, about being able to say, these things are really important to us and if we're gonna invest time and energy and dollars and the public good into this, <coughs> we need to see certain things accomplished from it. And that's a really good position for us to be in a community and one that we really haven't been in before. At least not for years and years and years. And there's so many things that are falling into place too, like that the post office doesn't need as big a building, that the, <coughs> we need more underground parking, so we can establish that, mm -hmm. that we want the library to be downtown, it needs to be bigger. How are we gonna accomplish that? And also with the finishing of 41 through downtown, all kind of coming together at the same time this is pulling together. So Correct. it's kind of cool to see all those pieces just starting to fall. But these guys do such a great job, boys, and it, you bring it to life. You kind of put us in the picture, even Kevin is in the picture. Hey, we have to work yeah. with these guys. Don't pump it up too much. No, I mean, <laughs> don't want to. Yeah. Hush. Yeah. You know? um, no, but you really bring it to life, and I think that just brings more ideas and spawns more ideas and, and I'm still trying to figure out where we're going to put the Ferris wheel though. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, it'll fit there. It'll fit there. And I think we cannot forget, you know, we look tonight at the at the building permit revenue and our market <coughs> values and everything that happened between 2009 and 2013. Everything went like this. Mm -hmm. And don't forget what this group up here decided to do during that time period was to go through a planning process to say, when the market comes back, this is what we want our downtown to be, and we want to be ready for that. And the downtown master plan that Hoisington helped us with at that uh, point really has become a checklist uh, for us to be able to go through and and not have to recreate, you know, to know where we're <laughs> going to put our efforts into. And uh, so I think huge kudos to the to the the leaders that were here and you know, in that time period that viewed that, let's not sit here and just wait for the economy to come back. Let's be ready when it comes back to be able to act on something. Plus you kind of create your own economy. Yeah, you your own create time. your own destiny. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I was oh. here, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, I was here back in, the, actually that from the, some of the first planning processes for the commitment to the community and also the original downtown master planning task force. And it was kind of interesting. I think Greg was on that same committee too, and it's that same task force. And we came across like a lot of a lot of the things that we talked about then are the same things we talk about now. That's about programming activation, but creating spaces where those things can happen. So this is you know just taking that like 20 steps further, and it's really kind of getting you know it's just building upon that. And now even to be able to see like these renderings tonight, it's kind of like just bringing that to life. Um, you know, much more so than any block diagram could because it really added that texture to say, okay, you know what, this is really what it could look like. Um, but even more so, it's like, you know, kind of taking those downtown thoughts beyond what we were talking about <laughs> 10 years ago was that when you look at any redevelopment site, there's always um, an afterglow or a halo of what's next door, right, to those sites. And as a catalyst site, this is so critical because you know, once this gets built and it gets populated and it gets activated, then the neighboring properties suddenly become much more valuable too. Hey, you know, because we're right across the street from that. And then those property owners become much more excited about saying, how can I reinvest? Because now I'm getting able to get better property values and better, higher rent that, you know, I can like reinvest and, you know, make my properties better and upgrade those. And that's where it gets really exciting because now we have two properties and then a third that's going to be where the, where the library goes that starting to create pieces where the momentum will start catching up or start not catching up the momentum will start building to a point where we don't have to do it it kind of goes on its own mm -hmm. and that's where it starts getting really exciting so you know in terms of a cattle site some of those things we identified back in those planning sessions were really really starting to come to life so this is incredibly exciting from that perspective to it's see such this a all fun happening. group too to work with everybody out there was so such ideas blowing everybody spoke up and mm -hmm shared and it was a great task force to be on thank you you know one more thing i forgot and i'm thinking of bob repke in my mind when i'm thinking <laughs> this we wouldn't be talking about any of this unless the flood control project would have oh, yeah. been there built you right. yep. so we can't ever forget that yep. none of the discussions in downtown would have ever happened if that flood control levy would have been built mm -hmm. so that gave the that was the infrastructure that gave us the ability to even have these discussions and and I think what's what it's really done is created a lot of partnerships that we we thought we've had a partnership, but we really didn't have a partnership till we started talking about the the use of land or purchasing land or whatever. That we you know we talked to the you know four or five different potential library sites now, like we talked about, that would be disappointed now that they're not going to be chosen. But that it well if we pick this site, then this has to move, and now where does that go? And and it's it's all of the fingers that start branching out of this project that mm -hmm. really, when you start thinking about it, it's it's kind of crazy about all the things that could happen, good things. It's a very transformative project uh, in terms of the downtown area. Uh, really, um, as great as Fireman's Park is, this is more connected to the downtown fabric. Mm -hmm. and right. has the ability to really impact the surrounding area much more substantially. Yep. Uh, that's one of the great things about um, this particular block and one that I think myself and I believe the task force is really excited about working on. Okay. There's think, so many moving pieces and they yeah. all interact. I think too it creates a kind of winter activities where Fireman's Park is more 
summer activities and even though there's some winter but I mean this could be this would be a great summer place but really making sure yes. that this is a place that people want to be year-round so it keeps uh, activity so down there even activity. in the winter yep. having the library just diagonal to it just reinforces that exactly. so that you know you can, I love that um, yes. have some connectivity the there uh, it, it all I think really um, uh, powerfully um, changes this let me like, I add just one last thing. Um, you know, like we talk about development a lot of you know, new projects as, as in terms of financial numbers, in terms of market studies and research and dollars and brick and mortar and all of the technical pieces. And you know, those are really important, really, really important things. But very few opportunities like this Mm -hmm. not just define the redevelopment in a technical perspective of adding more units, of adding more headcount, adding more you know, um, retail space and square footage, but very few of them help to redefine the soul or the spirit of a community. And this is one of those opportunities that does. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why this is probably one of the most important ones we'll do in the next decade at least. Mm -hmm. So to that end, um, we're asking you to adopt a resolution approving the concept plan for City Square West the two uh, alternate library sites and authorize the staff to move forward uh, with the next steps for City Square West and the library sites as identified in the uh, staff report. We'll make a motion. That's a, that's a lot of multiple. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that I said so head. moved. Yeah. You can say <laughs> so <laughs> moved. Yeah. yeah, what he said. What, and what he said so moved. so moved. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. You can do that. Okay, so I have a... Um, so, so I have a motion by Council Member uh, Long and second by Council Member Bowe yes. to adopt a resolution approving the concept plans for City Square West, two alternate library sites, authorize staff to move forward with the next steps for City Square West and library sites that are identified above staff report. Yes. Yeah, I heard everything you said. Easy. You did. <laughs> God, it was right there on paper. Yeah. I've been in trouble. Yeah, there you go. Well, before, um, so I have a, we have a motion and second um, here and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move in that I, I, I we kind of missed the opportunity kind of jumped at us if there's anybody else out here in the audience that did want to have an opportunity I think I could do that legally here oh sure if there's anyone else that wanted to say something regarding this uh, I just want to open that up I know that there's other folks out here that maybe did or didn't so anyone all right not seen anyone move we're, we're gonna go ahead with that so we have a motion and a second I don't know is there any further discussion from up here again it's a concept plan we're just <coughs> now starting to explore what what we can do here as we move into the future you know I would just echo what's already been said <coughs> thanks so much to everyone for the effort for the passion for the ideas that have come in and I'm especially pleased that libraries is a part of this discussion because that's been such an integral part of this whole project and the potential all along so it's, it's been a great group. I told us right away, I'm not, I don't want that library in there. Move it. <laughs> there we are. Just like that. That's right. She said, you move it or else we don't do the library. That's right. <laughs> yeah, there go. So we're going to quit programming. All right. Further discussion up here. All right. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries.